Hey there, this is Terrence from Photography123. I'm going to give you a quick tutorial how to do some lightning photography. A quick disclaimer to you though before you go out and do some lightning photography. Uh, some of it's obvious, frankly, lightning is very dangerous. Lightning can kill people, can kill you, uh, can kill others. So you need to be extremely cautious in terms of how you do it. You don't want to be in open field or you know hang on to a steel rod while you're you're taking lightning photography shots so important to know that you want to make sure you're in a adequately safe sheltered place uh, i say you go online take a look in terms of where is considered safe for lightning and ideally you want to be a good distance from that lightning you don't want to be right up in the action you've got a camera you've got a lens you can get close to it a bit from uh from from zooming in so that's a lot safer than being right there The first thing you want to do is uh, is have some basics of, uh, of what you're doing is obviously get a tripod. Um, if you're just hand holding your camera, you're just going to be moving around too much. You absolutely do need to have a, a tripod to keep your camera steady. So number one, keep your camera on a tripod for lighting photography uh, from wherever you're located. Point number two, you're going to want to have two settings off. You're going to want to turn off your autofocus and want it to be in manual focus, you're going to turn off your image stabilizer. I've talked about this in some of my other videos. Uh, end of the day though, when you're dealing with lightning photography, you need to have fast reaction and you're likely just keeping your camera focused on a scene in general. So you don't want to press the shutter and it starts to uh, autofocus again. Manual focus and stabilizer off because the camera is going to be in a tripod. Having the stabilizer on when you're on a tripod will actually create additional vibration when it's trying to autocorrect for movement that's not happening. So keep that off. With respect to uh, what setting you want to have it on, typically I do bulb mode uh, like that, or you could do manual uh, bulb mode. It will be connected to my uh, wireless remote trigger. Uh, if you want, you could do manual. Um, if you do do manual and you don't have a remote trigger, you want to focus on two settings. You want to have, obviously, your aperture is going to be the widest or close to the widest uh, setting that's absolutely possible. Reason being, you're shooting at night, right? It's, uh, it's lightning. That's where you're going to get the, the best, most dramatic pictures of lightning is at night. So you need to have it wide to, uh, to capture the light. Although it's bright enough that it doesn't take long to expose. And you're going to want to have a pretty long exposure. So I would say at minimum one second exposure. It's another reason why you need a tripod. Uh, you have the, the, the lens open for quite a bit of time. Might even have it much higher, uh, you know, maybe eight seconds, maybe even longer. I'll explain that in a second. Try to keep your ISO at 100 or maybe a, a couple hundred, just because I always like to make sure I have very uh, crisp, clean uh, photos with no noise in it. Obviously, when your ISO gets really high, you get a lot of noise, and you're not trying to see everything in a lightning shot. You just really want to focus on the lightning and anything else that might be lit up by it, and that's really what makes it uh, most dramatic. So before you start taking your shots as well, you want to focus in on what you're going to take a picture of. Uh, so obviously you're having manual uh, focus mode. You're going to be using the, uh, the focusing ring right here. You want to be pretty much at infinity. But I find sometimes with some lenses, and this one actually is, is one of them, that infinity isn't actually getting you perfectly clear for things at a distance. Uh, I'm going to assume that your lightning shot that you're taking, you see it happening in the distance couple of miles away, uh, so your safe distance. You want to obviously have uh, infinity for that long distance clarity, because if it's on you know, uh, macro side, obviously you're very close, so it's going to be all blurred. But at perfect infinity, I find it's not 100% crisp. I will take a test shot, take a look, and then I'll maybe adjust it just a little bit in that little range of infinity where the little, uh, little L shape is, sideways L shape and wait till I get the perfect level of crispness for whatever else is in that area because it typically won't be perfectly clear at infinity. So you want to make sure you do a few test shots that way to make sure you've got a, a clear, good shot. Uh, and then you're going to go to the next point, uh, which is a lot of waiting and a lot of photos. So when I say waiting and a lot of photos, here's the trick to lightning photography. 
I have done it before where you use the remote trigger and you press the button, you've got it you know, connected to your camera to take a shot every time you see lightning go, you boom, boom, and you're trying to get it really quickly. Uh, sometimes that will work. Uh, the reality is lightning doesn't last very long, as you know, and human movement, when their eye sees lightning, by the time my thumb is pressing the button uh, to take the picture, the moment may have passed or I'm only getting a, a partial exposure of it or not certainly as an intense an exposure. The trick a lot of uh, photographers will do who are doing lightning is do some test shots of your area. Oops, sorry, wrong one. Keep it at uh, wide aperture. Maybe do a test shot of like 10 second exposure. Keep the wide aperture, adjust your ISO so that the picture looks pretty decent. And then what you're gonna do as the lightning's going on and off, just keep on taking the photo. So you press it once. You're waiting there. If a lightning hits in that area you're focused on, while you have that uh, shutter open for the 10 seconds, I will tell you there's enough light in that lightning for your 10 second exposure to give you a pretty good image. So if nothing happens in that 10 second, you just keep on pressing the button every 10 seconds when it takes a photo and you're gonna see which one worked out well, which one, which shot hit. Uh, you know, standing there and doing that can be a bit boring, which I still use the remote trigger. That's why I put it uh, potentially in bulb mode or um, or not, but bulb mode, I will turn it on. I'll press the trigger once to take the exposure. Uh, I'll wait five, 10 seconds and I'll press it again to turn it off and then press again to turn it on and back and forth, all while sitting in a little lawn chair. So if you're out in some environment and uh, you're, you're doing all these shots and hopefully you're covered from rain if there's rain, you're a little more comfortable because you will probably spend at least half an hour to an hour taking shots and you'll probably take a hundred shots and maybe you'll get one or two that are decent but when you do get decent ones boy uh, lightning shots are, are fantastic so there's a lot of brute force involved in lightning photography but now that you know these little simple tricks it's going to be a lot easier for you to do uh, you know for most people I would just suggest manual mode maybe five to ten second exposure largest aperture you have like I said turn the uh, autofocus and the stabilizer off get the right zoom level, have it on a tripod, and just keep on plugging away, having it focus in that area where the lightning is hitting. Obviously lightning doesn't always uh, be consistent to the same spot, but typically if you have a, a wide enough field of view that where you're looking, you'll probably have lightning in that general area happening. So maybe it'll happen to the left or to the right of the photo, but, uh, but you'll get a good one. I hope you liked this video and hold on, I have a bonus for you. But please wait, you have to hold on a second here, okay? First things first, if you got any use out of this video, please like the video. That actually helps me make more videos for you down the road. If you find value out of this too, uh, do subscribe. Hit the bell icon after you subscribe so you'll get a notification right away when I post a new video. I'm going to be trying to do uh, once a week or twice a week as I can, probably Tuesdays and Thursdays, but we'll see. Uh, and share the video with anybody who will get any benefit out of this. If you have any other friends who are into photography and might want to try this, send this over to them. That will really help them. Finally, leave a comment below. If you have a question on what I've said and you need some clarification, uh, I have been pretty good at answering all comments lately. If you have uh, more ideas of what you'd like to see for videos, kinds of uh, photos you want to take, or kinds of techniques you want to learn on the camera, Send them off in the comments, let me know, and I'll try to get to them. Uh, I certainly try to do them whenever I can. And now for that bonus topic. Now for that bonus I promised you. I've got another video that's going to help you with lightning photography. It's called Three Bonus Secrets to Lightning Photos. And there's going to be a link popping up just below. Click on that, go to that video. It's three quick secrets to much better lightning photos than what you'll get from these. Uh, the tips I give you here are going to be fantastic, but these three other tips will actually just make things uh, a lot easier for you. Some are free, some will cost you some money to buy some equipment that makes it much, much easier, but trust me, uh, this video will be worth it just a couple of minutes long. So click on that link now and check it out. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video series. Have a good one.